Let's try your luck and throw a custom throwable projectile in Minecraft. Let's see. Do you have questions about Minecraft modding or just want to hang out and see some cool creations from other people? Maybe you want to plug your own mod or suggest a tutorial. Well, join my Discord server linked in the description below. However, be sure to properly read the rules and then you'll be welcomed to a cool place all about modding and Calvin Joe's content. Alright, we found ourselves back in Intelligence more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom throwable projectile entity to our mod right here. And you're going to find that this is actually fairly straightforward. However, there is a tiny thing that is... I wouldn't necessarily say unknown, but it is so important and it is so weird that this is probably what you've struggled with when you try to add a custom throwable projectile, but let's just take a look. So the way that this throwable projectile is going to work is we're going to have a custom item that is going to be thrown and then when it hits a block, it's going to spawn a custom block at that position and that's going to be sort of a dice block and you basically can throw the dice and it's going to have a different face up. So we're going to do all of that, but first of all, let's start with the entity itself. We do have to revisit a couple of classes in a bit, but let's start with the custom entity over here. This is the dice projectile entity in this case, which will extend the thrown item entity. Hover over this, get implemented the method. Hover over this again, create constructor matching super. It doesn't matter which constructor we take. We're going to have to change this anyway. So in this case, this is the correct constructor that we need. And we actually need a second one. And that is going to take in a living entity here in this case, or living entity. And then the first parameter is going to be kept empty, then passing in a living entity. And we're going to fix this error in a second. And then this is extremely important in your custom entity class for the thrown item entity. You want to overwrite the create spawn packet method, making a new entity spawn S to C packet, passing in this, and there you go. That is extremely important. If you don't add this, then it's not going to work. In our item, we're also going to make a deliberate error right here as we don't, don't have the item yet registered. And then for the functionality for our entity right here, we want to override the on block hit method. And once again, this is just specific for this example. This doesn't necessarily have to be the case. If this dot get world dot is client, right? And we're going to negate this with the exclamation mark, very important. Then we want to say this dot get world dot send entity status. This and then we're going to send a byte over here of a three. We'll also say this dot get world dot dot set block state at get block pause. And then we're going to say mod blocks dot dice block. Now this does not exist yet because, well, we haven't created it yet. So we're going to keep this as an error right here. And then we're going to do the rest over here in a second. Let's just add a three over here though. And there you go. And then also we want to discard. There you go as we basically want to throw the entity away. So as you can see, there's a couple of things that we still need to add over here, but no worries at all. Let's first of all, register the entity. And this is where a couple of people might have had issues. So we're going to go through the entirety of the process. And then I'll show you probably what the issue you might have had is, and then how to fix it. So this is, of course, a public static final entity type of type dice projectile entity. We're going to call this the dice projectile equal to registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry dot register registries dot entity type. Second parameter, a new identifier of tutorial mod dot mod ID. And this is the dice underscore projectile. Actually, the first closing parenthesis, we then want to say fabric entity type builder dot create spawn spawn group dot miscellaneous. Then the dice projectile entity colon colon new. After the first closing parenthesis dot dimensions, this is going to be entity dimensions.fixed and the fixed dimensions is going to be 0.25f and 0.25f at the second closing parenthesis.build and there you go. And now what you will find is that the new right here has an error. Now you might say, well, I'm just going to create this and there you go. Well, if you can look at this, well, this sort of clashes with this one. And the reason why this just doesn't work is because then you can actually create the dice projectile entity anymore for some freaking reason. Now to fix this, this is extremely crazy, okay? We want to go to the fabric entity type builder that create and after the dot, okay, you want to put in the angle brackets here and you put it in the dice projectile entity and all of a sudden it freaking works. If this is crazy, listen, I don't know. This is some magic Java stuff over here with generics. I don't know why this is the case or why you have to do this, but this is just sort of, it, it's targeting the correct generic basically and that way it targets the correct constructor over here. And that's basically how it works. And this might have been the issue that you've been struggling with. 
But there you go. That is the dice registered. So in the first constructor over here, we can then say mod entities dice projectile. And that fixes this issue. And we can move on to the item itself. Now for the item, of course, we need a custom item for this as well as a custom item class, right? So this is going to be our dice item here in the custom package. There you go. Now this will extend the item class in this case because it's going to be a normal item over over this create constructor matching super. And then what I'm going to do is something very interesting. And that is I'm going to press shift twice and I'm going to search for the snowball item here in this case. And what you can do is literally just copy over the use method because this is pretty much exactly what we want to do. So you're just going to copy this over, right? The entirety of the use method. And you're going to go to the dice item and paste it in here. And now, in theory, our dice item would throw snowballs. Now, of course, we don't want to throw snowballs. In terms of the sound, you can, of course, change stuff like that. That's not too bad. But in terms of the entity that it spawns right here, right? We should definitely spawn something different. And what it, what is this? This is the dice projectile entity. So instead of a new ball right here, we want a dice projectile entity. We're going to pass in the user and then the world. There you go. So this is the other way around. And we'll also rename this. So I'm going to click on this, press shift F6. And this is now the dice projectile entity. And the rest of this, actually, we can keep exactly like this. That's literally all we need to do. And this is now going to spawn our item or throw our item, let's say, right? When we right click with this dice item. So we now want to register this in the mod items class right here. Let's just take the corn right here. And this is going to be our dice. Of course, making sure we change the name over here as well to dice. And the rest here is actually okay. Then we just want a new dice item instead of the normal item. And that is it. That is the dice register. With that, we can now go back to the projectile again and say mod items dot dice over here. Now, this is not strictly necessary because in the dice item itself, we're setting the item via the item stack, right? So this is actually okay. However, if you want to be absolutely sure that this is done correct, then you should basically do this as well. Let's add the dice data gen as well. This is going to be for the model right here. This is literally just going to be the dice generated model. And there you go. Now, the last thing here is the blocks that is not yet been done. And before we move on to the blocks, let's actually also add it right here. This is going to be the dice Add it right there just so that we don't forget this. And then it comes to the block. So the block itself is a little more complicated. Now, the reason why the block is more complicated is because this is an example. Okay, this is the example because we're we're creating a block right here when the entity that we're throwing hits a block. That is the reason why we're creating this block. In this case, it is just an example. In theory, you don't have to do this. This is just an example. So in our custom package, we're going to make the dice block. And that is going to extend the block class. And for this, we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. And I'm going to copy over the contents of this as this is, as I've said, basically just an example. This should be taken as such. So we, have, of course, have a facing property because what I want to have is when the block lands, right? I want the possibility of each of the different numbers on top to basically be displayed. And that's going to be done with these different things right here. Of course, the append properties method, very important if we have a block state property. And then here, when you place the block, right, you get a random block state, which is basically going to be just get you a random direction over here. You can probably do this easier, but I found this to be absolutely totally fine. And that is basically going to be our dice block class here in this case. And then when it comes to the block registering, we once again want to make sure that we copy a block over here that is using registry.register. We don't want a, an item associated with this in this case. So this is going to be the dice underscore block. And then this is a dice block. And then we're going to just copy stone here. That's going to be okay. And there you go. That is going to be our dice block registered. And then we can actually finally go on to the on block hit method right here again. And we can say we can import the blocks class, the mod blocks class over here, and then cast this to a dice block. That's quite important because what we want to do is we want to call the get random block state method here in this case. And there you go. So it's going to set one of the different block states over here randomly. So it's going to have either a one, two, three, four, a five or a six at the top. And that is the general idea. Now for this, I have not created a custom data gen because it is such a specific block in this case that I thought, you know, I, th I don't think that a custom data gen here is really necessary. That's why we need the block states folder back and also why we have a dice block JSON file created right here. But you can see basically, you know, depending on what the number is, right? So the number is, of course, the name of the facing property here in this case. And then it's just going to choose a different model here. But we're added also adding the translation. 
or at least self-explanatory. And then the models over here, this is going to be the block models, dice one through six. And you will see, so basically this is always going to be changing. So if, if you compare them, right, so up and down, right, those are seven and then this is seven. So basically it's going to be a normal dice where the opposite faces always sum up to seven. An item model we don't need as this is actually being a data gen. And then we just need the textures. So this is going to be block textures. Once again, dice one through six here in this case, as well as the item texture. Don't forget that, but it's actually quite important here as well. And the reason why this is important is because the throwable projectile actually will take the dice texture that you have inside of the inventory as its texture when you throw the entity as well. So that's quite important. Right, and lastly, the entity over here has to be connected to a renderer, and that is going to be done by using the entity renderer registry from netmicrofabric over here dot register passing in mod entities dot dice projectile and then a flying item flying item entity renderer that's why we don't need a custom renderer because this is already done for us and that basically if you can take a look at this you can see it basically takes the stack from the flying item entity over here which is either the default item or an item that we set via the dice item over here right here right so the setting of the item then uses exactly that item for rendering you can of course always double check the code in the description below in the github repository let's run the data to get the item model json file and then we can jump into the game and throw our dice for the first time let's see all right finally back in minecraft as you can see the dice has been added if i throw it there you freaking go we're throwing dice and you can see that we're basically rolling different numbers every time the dice hits a block you know sometimes you get weird stuff like this so sometimes you might want to adjust the block position that it actually you know occupies so to speak but overall this is a pretty freaking cool example of you know showing a throwable item projectile and there you go that is how easy it is to add a custom throwable projectile to minecraft and that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about ore generation. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.